Now we'll look at gravitational potential energy for our universal case. But let's start by recalling what it looks like near Earth. So remember, we had this idea that you have the ground here, and you have a y axis here, and maybe you've got a ball or a mass that started here at yi, but you moved it up uh, to yf. And we thought about how you did work on it. You gave it potential energy. It has the ability to convert that back to kinetic energy. And we maybe did an integral to find that. Maybe I just gave you the equation. I don't remember. But the change in potential energy is delta u is mg delta y. So if you go from a small to a big value, you increase delta y. Delta y is positive. You increase the, internal, uh, the potential energy. That's also a positive. But that was it. You do work to increase the potential energy. Now we're going to do that for our formula uh, for universal gravitational potential, or universal gravity. So we're going to think in terms of the source mass and the test mass again. So let's see, m, t. So we'll say this one stays still. The test mass starts here, and then we're going to move it out to here. So how much do we have the potential, how much does the potential change if we go here is Ri and here is Rf, okay? And let's see, so to get it, you got to remember sort of what's happening, which formula do you use? There's so many formulas for delta U, it depends, so you always get it by calculating the work done. But you got to think about, is it external agent doing the work or an internal agent doing the work? And which way are you going, et cetera? So if an external agent does the work, you increase the potential energy. So we're going to use that one. We're going to say the integral from Ri to Rf of the external force dotted with dr should be the change of potential energy, where the drs are just the little steps that you went on along the path. There we go. That should be everything we need. So now, we just got to plug in the force, do the calculation, see what we get. So the change in potential energy, the integral from the initial r to the final r. So what is that force? Well, we know it's gmm over r squared, r hat. Right? So let's write that. g m source m test over R, how far away it is, it's going to go from Ri to Rf, um, R hat source to test. Right? That would be the unit vector pointing that way, from the source to the test. right? And that's dotted with dr. So here's our first minus sign to think about. Is there a minus sign there? So if we were calculating the gravitational force that ms applies to mt, then yeah, there's a negative sign there. But that's not the force we're using. We're doing an external force. So we're actually calculating based on the force that an external agent has to push to get it from here to here. Gravity will pull it this way. So basically, an external agent has to apply the same force, and then just a little teeny bit more to get it moving. And then it gets it to there. So it basically applies the gravitational force the whole way. So we write the magnitude of the gravitational force, but we say it's in the opposite direction. This isn't being done by gravity. This is being done by my hand, my external hand pushing it this way. So that's why I left the negative sign off, is the external force pushing it is in the direction of the unit vector from source to test. It's that way. Okay. And dr is also that way. So you can see those are the same way. So we could write another step and say it's the integral from ri to rf of g m source m test over r squared. Um, and that dot product is the magnitude of r st, r hat st. It's a unit vector. The magnitude's 1. Pfft, forget it. The magnitude of dr vector is dr. And then the cosine of the angle between them, but that's 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. So we just took out the dot product, right? The dot product's gone. Now we just have an integral. Okay. So let's say 
tell to you. Let's pull out the constants. G m source m test. G m source m test. Oh, that's it if there's nothing in the bottom. M source m test integral from Ri to Rf of dr over r squared. Oops, r squared. Like that. Okay. And now we take the integral. It's just the integral of r to the minus 2, which is minus r to the minus 1. So we get a minus sign shows up from the integration m source m test um, uh, 1 over r evaluated from ri to rf. And then we get that delta u is minus g m source, the two masses um, over uh, times 1 over rf minus 1 over ri. Right, and that's really it. Okay, You can be tempted to write it a bunch of different ways. You can write it a bunch of different ways. You could get rid of this negative sign and just flip these two. You could just distribute the negative there. You might see it written that way. But really, nothing else changes it. That's really the answer. You could also do this whole calculation <coughs> by making this Ri and this Rf. Right? If this was the initial and this was the final, what would happen? And we still were doing external work. Then, let's see, it wants to go this way by itself. So with the external force, it's still pushing that way because it's having to keep it from crashing in. It's having to balance the force. So the Fs would be that way, the DRs would be this way, and then suddenly they'd be the opposite direction. So when you did that dot product, you'd get a negative sign. And you'd think that throws everything off. But when you go plug in numbers, now this is big and this is small, right? The, the size of these two flips and they invert and it flips. Right, so the negative sign you think you would have show up here to the dot product goes away here when you apply the limits. And then the whole thing you could also do for an internal force. And when you write this formula for the internal force, when you actually write the gravitational force, you put a negative there. And then all the negative signs cancel out again. So there's four ways you could do it. And all four ways give you the exact same answer. A negative sign here, 1 over Rf minus 1 over Ri there. Because basically the change in the potential energy doesn't care how you think of it or how you do it, whether it's external force, internal force, which way you go. Okay. I neglected, though, to go through and think, is this correct? Let's, let's take a break here and think, is this right? If we go from a small radius to a big radius, have we increased or decreased the potential? We have increased it. We're going further away. right? If we released it from here, it would go that way. That's really the way that you decrease the potential and gain kinetic. Here you're increasing the potential because you could have more kinetic. So moving that way is just like moving up in the gravitational field. So if we went from small to large, what is this going to be? Let's see, small to large. So 1 over small, this is the big number. And 1 over large, this is the smaller number. So a small number minus a big number is negative. So there's a negative sign, but then the negative sign there. So you get delta U is positive. So you increase the potential energy. Sure enough, it works. If you went from here to here, you're going to decrease the potential energy. And yeah, if you went initial was the big number, this would be small, this would be big. Big minus small is positive. Negative there, you decrease potential energy. So these negatives can fly around and can confuse you. I think I covered all, all the cases to help you think about it.